Armstrong two and two to Alberto. And fly ball left field. Mabin's under it, and that is going to do it for the 2018 season, everybody. Mariners win it three to one. And the Mariners get their 89th win. It's the six most wins in franchise history. And so concludes the 2018 season. I want the Mariners to be great. Was this Mariner team great? Are they on the precipice of being great? How do they get to be? You have to, be, I believe you've got to get worse to get great. And I know, Curtis, you agree with me on this, but I, I think that, that you have to find a way to use the assets that you have to make your team great. And that means trading Hanniger, trading Diaz, trading Gonzalez, trading Segura, trading Paxton, trading anybody on your team that you think can help bring back players that can be part of a legitimate nucleus in three to five years that can make you great. Not good, but great. And if you don't want to do that, you've probably got to go spend a tremendous amount of short-term money. And I don't think history is behind that as being a successful strategy. Well, they can't spend that money because they're going to run into the luxury tax, which is something that they won't do if you're talking about huge, huge, huge. Stuff. So what would you do? Okay. I think they are in a spot right now where there's not much. That, I don't believe that they can tear down that much. And my problem with that is there's no guarantee. You get five years out and you don't have anything at that point, then you've got a problem. And I think that what we're looking at right now is you've got to really break down where you're at. And Mike Zanino will be an all-star with the Tampa Bay Rays. You can book that. Oh, I can't wait. In two years or less, he will be an all-star, and you can book it. He's going to hit like 224, but he's going to hit 35 bombs in that place. He's going to be the best defensive catcher in baseball, which he was this last season with 12 runs saved, and uh, a pitching staff that is absolutely going to love him. He's going home to where he's originally from, where he was the Golden Spikes Award winner, where he was the number three pick in the draft, and he's going to turn into a tremendous player. You can book that right now on november i'll take those 8th odds of 2018 i'll take those odds okay i'll, I'll take them just fine oh good mike zanino is a good defensive player and unfortunately catcher isn't a position where you get defensive replacements he's got some power he swings and misses more than almost any player i've ever watched at least from my eye test and i'm not going to miss watching him for one second on monday november 19th the Yankees made an instant upgrade to their starting rotation by acquiring left-handed pitcher James Paxton from Seattle in exchange for three minor leaguers, headlined by top overall pitching prospect Justice Sheffield. Sheffield, obviously a lot of hype for years yeah. about him. We know about this prospect hype. A lot of times it pans out, a lot of times it does not. They obviously decided that he wasn't worth it. They move on and take a chance on Paxton, yeah. as opposed to waiting for the potential in Sheffield to develop. What do you think their read is on Sheffield? I think they dodged a bullet by getting him out of town before he lost more value. Because this is somebody who, yeah, he was high on the prospect. He was list, untouchable the left recently, pitcher. Right? Yeah, he was an untouchable guy, but they didn't. They weren't impressed by him in AAA last year. As he was having trouble throwing strikes. The Yankees had a clear need for pitching, obviously, during the season. Both mm -hmm. rotation and bullpen at different times. And they just didn't see it with Sheffield. They even brought him up in September just to see if he could force his way into that playoff picture as this dynamic rookie to burst on the scene. He couldn't. And they didn't think, frankly, they just looked at him and they said, this isn't a player who really excites us. So the fact that they found another organization that apparently was excited by Justice Sheffield is, is lucky for them because I don't think he was ever going to have as much value as he had. The Mariners have made what appears to be a mega deal. Not done yet. Hasn't been officially announced, but it sure sounds like we know the details at this point. Uh, they'll be sending Robinson Cano and Edwin Diaz plus cash to the New York Mets. They get back a package that includes a couple of the Mets' top prospects, Jared Kalenic and Justin Dunn, both of whom are number one picks, first-round picks. Uh, in Kalenic's case, number six pick in the draft just a year ago, really big-time prospect. In Dunn's case, uh, he was more of a back half of the first-round guy. He was actually a player that they may have taken instead of Kyle Lewis if Lewis hadn't fallen to them at that pick a couple of years ago. So uh, let me just tell you this and, and give me a moment or two here. I feel good about this. Yeah. I generally feel pretty good about what the Mariners have done yesterday. It's not perfect. It's not an A+. It's not an A+. 
It's probably a B plus A minus for me. Okay. Um, right. Based on based on what they could have gotten for Diaz versus what they did. But I'll give you three reasons why I feel pretty good about it. Number one, legit talent. They are getting back two first round picks who are young, who are in their time frame. They are legitimate talent, and Kalenic especially is that he's the big piece of this deal. He is, by all accounts, a baseball obsessed leader. And when you're trying to not only rebuild your talent base, but also trying to change culture in your organization, getting a guy who is as baseball obsessed as Kalenic, in addition to being really good, yeah. is a great, great thing. Number two for me, and why I like this, they rid themselves of Cano. And it had to happen. And I, I know there are people who think this is a salary dump. Yeah, they are they are gonna lose some salary, which is good news. But more than that, it's personality dumping. Yeah. You, are, you are trying to change the culture of your clubhouse, which is why a guy like Kalenic is so important and why it is also important to move on from Robinson Cano. You're clearing the clubhouse so that you can start again. This is more like getting rid of Richard Sherman and Michael Bennett. Mm-hmm. It's saying it's time for now in baseball. It's not quite as easy as that. You yeah. can't just cut a guy and be like, eh. Well, just move on. Right. You actually have to find a taker, and Cano has a you know he has no trade rights, and there's only a couple places he's going to go, so your options are limited. But you found a taker for Robinson Cano that was deemed to be impossible. Third reason, and I think if you're a Mariner fan, this is the thing that you should really enjoy. In addition to how good Kalenic and some of these other guys may be, the baseball operations people that I've talked to in and around the Mariners are happy. That's really important mm-hmm. because if you're if you're if you're skeptical of the deal. Your big fear is, quote-unquote, ownership forced them to get rid of the Cano salary yeah. and that they have to throw Diaz in in order to do it. That's your fear. Well, the baseball ops folks were happy. They felt like it was about talent. They felt like ownership let them do their thing and maximize the amount of talent in, the, in this deal. So it really becomes about baseball, not about money. With the sixth selection... Of the 2018 MLB draft, the New York Mets select Jared Kelnick, an outfielder. Jared's an outfielder from Waukesha West High School in Waukesha, Wisconsin. The San Diego Padres have the next selection. Jared Kelnick is the first Badger State product ever drafted in the top ten. And here's the spotlight. Jared I play center field I'm from Waukesha, Wisconsin. I'm somebody that brings a lot of passion to the game, but sometimes I like to mess around at the same time. What some people don't know about me is I like romantic movies. Heart Attack by Demi Lovato. Make me want to act like a girl. Pay my dues and wear high heels. Yes, you make me so nervous that you just can't hold your hand. Oh, I draft him, too. Why y'all do that to him? He's going to New York City. <laughs> well, they've worked out for Brandon Nimmo. How about this? This Louisville commit played on a travel team this spring instead of his high school team because of the tough weather in Wisconsin. And Nimmo was from Wyoming and didn't play high school baseball. It worked out with Nimmo. We'll see if it works out with Kelnick. Bill Ripken standing by with more on Jared Kelnick. Okay, pure hitter and gamer. I got a first-hand look at this guy in Chicago. The home run derby in that game. He didn't advance. My man was hacked. He wants to play. He wants to compete. And when I look at this guy, they talk about for his age, maybe the best pure hitter in the draft. Uh, This swing is easy. He has a good idea at home plate during the game that night. Base hit the other way right here on a 92 mile an hour fastball. He said, hello, Tristan. I'll see you in June at the draft, big fella. I won't see you too long here, though, because I'm running. I'm gone. I'm stealing the bag. My man can hit. He can play the game, and this play really jumped out at me. Going to the corner in Wrigley, making this play and making this throw into second base is awesome. This is a big league ballpark. That's deep down the right field corner. Great angle, great understanding of the game. So this kid, Jared Kelnick, I think he's going to get into the minor league system. I think he's going to swing the bat. He's going to prove to people he knows how to play the game. And more importantly, he wants to play the game every single day. That's a great breakdown. Bill saw him firsthand. You know, Bill does that Under Armour All-American game out in Chicago every year, so he gets a chance to see this guy. Look, I, I, lo- I watched him in, in a few of these showcase-type games. I love the fact he's athletic. I've heard he's compared to a Grady Sizemore type of body. But when I watched him swing just outside of a game in BP, he reminded me of the power of, like, a Logan Morrison type of swing. So this kid's very athletic. I don't know what they're going to end up doing with him, but he's going to get in the system and go. 
And I love the fact there's a lot of upside. You heard about his story of not playing different games and stuff like that because of the weather. And I think the upside is still sitting right there perfectly for him. You dig the cold weather, guys. I love it, man. Wow. Um, Seattle, what, 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 are, what are you doing? If you're a Seattle Mariners fan, you can no longer be upset about the haul you got back for Cano and Diaz because, oh my God, is this a horrible trade in my opinion. J.P. Crawford and Carlos Santana for Segura, Pazos, and Nicasio. Now listen, I understand. Nicasio and James Pazos were thrown in there to even out the salary moves because they're getting, they're getting a big-ass contract from Carlos Santana. My God, what a bad contract. Carlos Santana has two years left, $40 million on the contract with the team option in 2021, which of course the Mariners will not be picking up because Carlos Santana is not worth $20 million a year. So you take the bad contract of Carlos Santana, you take JP Crawford, who, ugh, he is not living up to that top prospect hype. I mean, this was a guy, I remember when Jimmy Rollins was still there with the Phillies, he was going to be the next big thing at shortstop for Philadelphia, and he has just been complete and utter garbage. I understand he really hasn't played a full season. He hasn't gotten a good shot up at the major leagues. Maybe he still has something left. But from the games I've seen him play his at-bats, I don't see much in this guy. He doesn't seem like he's ever going to be an impact player. Decent with the glove. Nice glove at shortstop, but he can't hit a lick for his life. He's terrible at the plate. Terrible. You know, we really didn't anticipate moving Robbie Cano. And, and as a result, we didn't really anticipate moving Edwin. But the rest of it is, is much by design. And I, I can't say as we're completely done yet, but I think most of the heavy lifting is done. And I think all the guys that we have acquired, you know, starting, to, you know, J.P. Crawford is going to play at 24 years old this year. Uh, Justin Dunn's going to play at 23 years old. You know, the, the, only, the only player that we have acquired in the last month who might be pressed to get on the front side of that window is Jared Kellenick. Everybody else should be kind of making their way towards Seattle, if not immediately, then certainly by midseason 2020, which was the, the, that was the timeline we were trying to set up. And then they join a group of players we already have in house. Absolutely. Hi everyone, my name is Yusei Kikuchi of the Seattle Mariners. I'm very happy to be here. Today is a very special day for my family and I. Thank you for my family and amazing wife Rumi, my friends, my high school coach, and my mentor, Mr. Sasaki, for supporting me every day. Playing in the big league has been a dream of mine since I was 15 years old. Thank you, Sir Bryons, for letting me go on and dream my dream. Uh, my nurse, ownership, and Mr. Depoto, and Mr. Service, thank you for my, thank you for this new journey. And to my new teammates, I can't wait to meet you guys soon. Thank you. Got reaction, Joel Sherman, Dan O'Dowd, John Flaherty with us. Mariners signing Yusei Kikuchi from Japan. Three years, 43 million, 56 million guaranteed. And then there's more to that deal than even that. It could go on and on. There's a four-year option after that. Joel, your thoughts? Mariners open against Oakland in Tokyo next year. I bet you Mr. Kikuchi starts one of those two games. Okay. What do you think? 
I think he reads like a solid number three starter. Pitch mix similar to Corbin, 85% fastballs and sliders. Concern, he's a six foot left hander. We'll strike out more guys here than over there because there's no launch revolution in Japan. It's more contact. Okay. I like the deal because the organization gets three or four years to kind of evaluate what he's going to be and then make a big time decision after that. Obviously, in a rebuild, it's going to take some time. Mariners acquire Reds prospect Shed Long yesterday in what was essentially a three-team deal that sent centerfield prospect Josh Stowers to the Yankees. Stowers had been a second-round pick a year ago, an athletic kid with a lot of personality. I'm a little bummed. I really liked him. On the other hand, Shed Long uh, actually looks really, really good. He immediately becomes a top seven or eight prospect in the Mariners farm system, depending on who you're re reading. He also plays a position that they have a lot more need for. Honestly, he and Stowers have a lot in common. They both are athletic. They both have a little bit of pop. But Long is, A, closer to the big leagues, mm -hmm. which fits their window better, and, B, plays the infield instead of the outfield, which is something they have a lot of need for. Well, here's what baseball needs to know. If you want to get a deal done, just bring Jerry DePoto in. Because it sure feels like this entire Major League Baseball offseason, before the even winter meetings began, has been about one team and one team only. And that is the Seattle Mariners. And, you know, if Sonny Gray needs to get traded, hey, can we call Jerry up? I think Jerry could find a way to get a three-team deal done and, and find a way to move enough pieces. Hey, by the way, why don't you hire Jerry DePoto as a consultant, put a little more cash in the Mariners' back pocket, and he will go get you a deal for Manny Machado, for Bryce Harper, for the rest of the guys. Just bring Jerry in because Jerry is a deal maker and spins yet another one yesterday.